Hi everybody, I'm Dave from the Polypad team and I am here to share with you the Polypad updates for September 2024. Uh, so let's get started. A lot of the updates we have made here have to do with styling and formatting of tiles. So I've clicked on this hexagon. I'm going to go to the color picker. And for those of you that have used Polypad a lot, you might notice this is a simplified color picker. All I can do is choose from one of the predefined um, predefined colors that we have here in the palette. There's no longer the sliders to change an RGB value. But we have enabled uh, additional options with, uh, with the colors of tiles. So I'm going to go to the File tab here, and I'm going to go into Authoring Mode. And when I'm inside of Authoring Mode, you'll notice when I go to the Color Picker, uh, additional options appear. Here are the sliders to enter an RGB value. The bottom slider controls the level of transparency of the tile, so I can change that. But what's new, also I'm gonna zoom in a bit here. What's new, when I click on the pen here, I can now change the stroke of the tile, the outline. So I'm gonna click on the purple. You see we've added a purple outline around the tile. I could choose between none, a thin purple, medium, or thick and we could do a solid line, dashed, or dotted. I'm showing it on a polygon, but this is available on almost all of the tiles on Polypad. Inside of authoring mode, you can change the fill on the stroke. If you want that, uh, if you want these advanced options to appear outside of authoring mode, you can see there's a new toggle here called advanced colors. And if I turn this on and go out of authoring mode, you'll see now I get the advanced options on the color picker. Uh, so I will leave that on for the rest of this video because I want to show you a number of different features with this advanced color picker. So let me go back to the tile menu. I'm actually going to start with some text here. So let me just say sample text. So that's not new. We've had text boxes for a while. But now when I go to the color picker, I have three options to choose from. I can change the fill of the text box. I could put a stroke around the text box. We'll do a blue... Uh, medium, and then I can change the color of the text. So there is a text box that I made. Let's make the fill a little bit darker to get that uh, text really to stand out. Uh, I don't love the blue outline, so maybe we'll make this a red outline. There we go, something like that, sample text. That also works on equations as well. So if I could do an equation like two thirds is what I meant to type, there we go, two thirds. And you can see the same options appear. We could add a fill and a stroke and change the font color as we like. There we go. Uh, the other thing that's new here on both the text box and the equations is when I go into authoring mode, let me go into authoring mode here, uh, there's the option to add a corner radius to a text box and an equation. So you can see as I change the corner radius, those corners get, get rounded a bit. So all sorts of styling options here as well. Uh, the final thing about a text box inside of authoring mode, I can change it from an auto height to a fixed height. And what that allows you to do as an author is uh, I can set it so it is, a, it is a fixed height if I want to make a really large text box like that. When I go back to um, to the layout of auto, let me just go to auto height. You can see that it just uh, the text box's height is the same as the amount of text that I have in the box. Uh, so those are some new options. Um, the other place where a corner radius can be applied is on polygons. So let me just drag out a few of these polygons. I'm inside of authoring mode still. You can see I have this authoring mode on. And when I go here, I'll scroll down a bit, you can see I can apply a corner radius to these polygons, so give those a little different look and feel as well. This applies to all the polygons, including the custom polygon. So if I drag out the custom polygon, this is not a new tile, this tile we've had for a while. You can click to add a vertex, as you may know, so you can make all sorts of fun shapes. But now you can apply a corner radius to the custom polygon. So let me uh, get a corner radius. I'll go to 0.5, maybe give it a nice rounded corners. Oops, I'll just type in actually 0 0.5. Oh, something happened there. There we go. Uh, 0 0.5. 
There we are. All right, so there is the, um, the corner radius. And as I drag them, I can see the spot of the original vertex, but now I get these, these rounded corners on the custom polygon. So really allows you to make all sorts of, uh, of fun shapes. We could do like some bubble letters even. Uh, I could, you know, do something like this, get these to be at the same spot, maybe uh, make a, like an E or something, right? So I could have one in here, drag this one in, come on out like this. So I'd want to go down a little bit more, right? Uh, drag another point out and another one here. Not bad. Uh, it's a little weird, but I could adjust that as I wanted. So adding a, a corner radius to the polygons and the custom polygon really opens the door up to all sorts of different uh, shapes that you can make. So looking forward to see what kind of creativity people can use with the corner radius on the custom polygon. Okay, we've also added some formatting to um, imported images. So I added one to this canvas to start. So here is an imported Im image of a beagle. This uh, is a PNG file with the background removed. So this image does not have a background. I'll show you that because you can see that um, when I move this image, you can see the square behind it. So that's not new. We've been able to, uh, users have been able to add images to Polypad for a while, including PNGs without, without a background. What's new is the option to add a drop shadow to the image. So I'm still inside of authoring mode, and here we are. Uh, I'm gonna, oops, I'm going to, where did my window go? There it is, all right. Uh, I'm going to go to the More Tools menu, and I'm gonna turn on the Drop Shadow. So see at the very top under Tile option, there's a Drop Shadow. When I turn this toggle on, you'll notice a little gray is gonna appear at the bottom and the right-hand side of this image. So here we go. Uh, there's that little gray, and you can see it makes it sort of pop above the canvas a little bit. So uh, you can see it sort of gives this effect like it's hovering over the canvas. If I turn this off, you can see now it's gone. The other nice thing about when, it, when I've turned on the drop shadow, that actually created a white fill in the background of this image. So now if I wanted to make it like a light purple fill, I have to click on the image first. So let me select the image, and now I can make it like purple with, with that drop shadow. So really, uh, uh, um, additional options to format and style in inserted images onto Polypad. OK, the other place where we've added some formatting is drop zones. So I'm going to go to the Tile menu. Uh, I am still inside of authoring mode, so we get this additional section of authoring tools. And there's a drop zone here. Uh, I'm not going to get into the how to use drop zones and what they're for in this video. Drop zones have been on Polypad for a while. You can click on the question mark of any tile, including the drop zone. And so if I click on this question mark, there's a whole tutorial section on drop zones. So go, go explore and read about what, what drop zones are all about. But uh, what I want to do here, let me go um, back and... Uh, show you the new styling options on the drop zone. So if I make this a little bit bigger, and you can see now that there is fill and stroke and focus on the drop zone. So the fill color will add a, a fill color to the drop zone, as expected. The stroke will put a, a uh, an outline around the drop zone, as you've seen. But there's this new option called focus, and the focus is what color you're going to apply to the drop zone when a user is dragging a tile over the drop zone or has clicked a tile that could go into the drop zone. So I'm going to make it like this, this green color here. So we don't see anything yet. But if I find a tile like this, let me go out of authoring mode. Um, I got, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut to go out of authoring mode, Command Shift A. So you can see those checkboxes have gone away. Now, when I click on the tile and start to drag it, you'll see the outline of the drop zone changes to that green color with the dotted line around it. And when I hover over the drop zone, the fill of the drop zone color, the, the color of the fill changes to a transparent version of what I had set as the fill color. 
and the stroke goes from dotted to solid. So that's like showing the user, if you let go right now, that, that tile will go into the drop zone. There we are. Uh, I didn't set a, uh, a flow to the drop zone. Let me just do this again. I'm going to go back into authoring mode, command shift A. I'm going to do a layout of the drop zone as center. That means when I let go, that square is going to snap right into the center of the drop zone. So here, when I let go, see, I, I, I'm getting this feedback that I can let go right now because the fill color has changed, and there the square goes right into the center. Again, if you want to learn more about drop zones, you can add a drop zone to the canvas inside of authoring mode and head over to the tutorial menu, all sorts of info about drop zones. Awesome. So all sorts of styling updates new to Polypad in uh, September 2024. Thanks for checking out this video. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions.